welcome to You Multicultural's Community Hour. In this segment, we are talking about civic issues in Winnipeg, Manitoba. In today's show, I want you to meet Monica Feist. She is the Chief Executive Officer of Success Skills Center, which focuses on recognition of the skills, education and training of immigrant professionals and uh, skilled workers. Hello, Monica. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Well, thank you for inviting me. Much appreciated. In today's episode, Monica is going to tell us more about programs and services provided by Success Skills Center and give some advice to those who are struggling with employment. First of all, I want to know more about you. So can you please introduce yourself and Success Skills Center? Oh. Well, I've been involved with Success Skills Center oh, for well over 40 years. Uh, getting it started originally and then coming on as a staff member uh, back in 1988-89 and uh, running the programs uh, ever since. Um, the reason we started or I started uh, uh, having Success Skills Center developed was because we had so many immigrants coming to Canada who had all these professions and they were not able to practice here. So that was the impetus that got me started in wanting a program such as what we have now. And we have continued in that vein as a niche uh, agency basically to provide that service to immigrant professionals and skilled workers. Success Skills Center yeah. started uh, with only 10 immigrant uh, professional women in uh, 1985, but now you help thousands of immigrants um, and it actually grows very fast. What do you think is the um, one thing that make it grow so fast? Okay, uh, I guess I can take that in a different perspective. Uh, the center at various times has had larger number of immigrants coming to it and smaller numbers. And that totally depended on the contracts that we had with the government. Mm -hmm. uh, up to about uh, 2011, from 19, I guess, uh, 98, we, uh, the number of clients ranged anywhere from uh, uh, 60 to up to 1,100 clients a year. And that was because back in 1998, the government then brought on the provincial nominee program. And we were one of the few employment serving agencies uh, uh, serving immigrants at that time. Uh, we then worked with the province to develop uh, a central intake agency, which you may know as Manitoba Start, uh, with the intent that those, uh, that agency would then refer individuals out to the different agencies that were helping immigrants uh, get into jobs and training and whatever it was that they needed. So in that context, uh, our yearly numbers started increasing from 1998 onwards. Uh, presently, what we are not funded by the federal uh, government that is with I shouldn't say that totally with uh, uh, the federal immigration department nor are we uh, funded by the provincial government uh, so we do take we are presently working in contracts with a number of other organizations who need to fulfill their contracts and so we are the Manitoba representative for those organizations so we do some pre-arrival uh, work where we actually uh, work with people overseas uh, where on the one hand helping them prepare themselves for coming to Canada, helping them with their resumes, helping them with their letters, helping them in terms of also where they are settling, getting them settlement information, and then connecting them to the agencies that would be able to help them. In other words, uh, whichever part of Manitoba that they may need to, that they plan to go to, we try to connect them with the immigrant serving agency. And we do the same in, Man in Winnipeg, we connect them with Manitoba Start. 
uh, or the immigrant center, depending on the particular uh, situations. Mm -hmm. uh, then we also do a pre-arrival mentoring program. So again, uh, that we uh, basically provide mentors from Manitoba who will perhaps address some of the issues that some of the professionals have that they want to know more about their particular profession or occupation in Manitoba. And then we do a further um, contract whereby we place uh, uh, both youth and also adults uh, who are beyond 30. Uh, right now we don't have an, a contract for over 30, but we're looking forward to another contract coming soon where we would be placing people not only in Manitoba, but also potentially across Canada. We've always placed people across Canada when there aren't the jobs here for them. They may come with very specialized occupations and there are very limited opportunities here and they only have a choice of changing occupations, going to their own business uh, or be unemployed and not working at all in their occupation or the potential of working in their occupation somewhere where that demand is. So we try to look at their, the individual holistically with the hope that we can help them get to what their goals are in coming to Canada. So in your organization you have lots of different programs starting from uh, preparing a resume uh, and into job interview skills. Uh, what uh, program you find the most difficult for your clients? Where do they most struggle? Interesting question. We do what's called a hands-on practicum. And within that, we cover all the areas that have to do with resumes and letter writing. And certainly those are harder areas for, the, for all individuals to do. Uh, usually individuals do end up coming to us already with a resume, which they have worked on with another agency. Our job is to focus that resume for the occupation that they wish and uh, ensure that they have a thorough understanding of what those expectations are within those occupations and also to be able to express within their resumes what it is in comparison, for instance, with the Canadian uh, occupational code uh, where the basics of that occupation is described. So it's called the National Occupation uh, co uh, Code and uh, NOC is what we call it and uh, make sure that they are able to address in their interviews specifically those areas to ensure that they stay on track. So that's one thing, that, one area that really needs some work. And the other area, of course, are those things that have to do with the ethics, the uh, behavior on the job, uh, the expectations of a professional in the job, uh, so we deal to some extent to that. Of course, the legislation, some of them may have heard about some of the legislation, some may not. So in terms of both the human rights legislation, the employment legislation, and so on. So we tend to bring all that forward for the clients to ensure that there's a good understanding before they get into the job. We Generally, we like to work with them in the placement with employers. Mm -hmm. When we have paid, um, uh, paid internships, uh, we are just undergoing one right now. That particular program is for racialized women. So in that one, we would be placing individuals with employers who participate and uh, also take some of our uh, training, the employers, uh, on top of the clients or over above the clients. And uh, then the individuals in this case uh, have a 16 week placement with the employers. The salaries are paid through the employers, but actually they come to us to pay out to the employers. So uh, it's a minimal uh, cost to the employer, but the intention is to have those individuals preferably hired, provided they are able to do the work. So during that period, they're monitored. Uh, if there's any deficits or any issues, we deal with that. Uh, we try to encourage individuals to start moving into their
qualifications, uh, meaning that uh, uh, to apply for their credentials and to follow through taking courses, which are usually after, after hours, uh, and also to let individuals know that in Canada, it's continuous learning. So when you're mm -hmm. on the job, you're still taking courses every year to keep up with what's new and what you need to know. What is the main reason why people stay unemployed for a long time? Too high expectation that do not match reality or uh, lacking of a Canadian diploma or what? Well, one I think uh, is uh, you've got to be looking for a job mm -hmm. actively. You've got to have a, a resume and you've got to be able to respond to the employer in terms of what they're looking for. Often people say, well, you know, uh, I'd like to learn on the job. Well, the employer doesn't want somebody who wants to learn on the job. I mean, they accept that you want to learn, but they they'd like you to, you to be able to start, <laughs> start right, right away, away yeah. not accept, you know, expect you to sit back and wait for someone to teach you. So you've got to have that in mind. So you do need that a, a kind of initiative is what you really need, you know. So that's part of it. Uh, attitude can be a problem. Uh, a variety of scenarios can be presented on that. You know, some individuals, uh, you know, they feel they already know it all, and uh, then of course that may not be <laughs> may not be the right know it all, right? So there's a number of those kind of things that come in between. Uh, uh, one does need to exhibit, uh, and, you know, that one's anxious to work, that one wants to work, one, certainly one wants to learn, but that one is able to contribute to the employer because the employer, after all, is hiring you because their intent is to improve their bottom line. In other words, they are there making a profit or they have to get a job done and that's why you're there. And if that job doesn't get done or can't get done properly, then it becomes problematic. Uh, for some people, uh, uh, they stay unemployed because maybe they don't know where to look. You know, I mean, there's probably a lot of reasons why, you know, the time may not be right uh, for their particular occupation. You may be looking for a job as an engineer, for example, as a civil engineer who who's basically working in construction outdoors, while in the wintertime, Winnipeg isn't exactly doing too much construction, you know? I mean, there is some going on, but, you know, it depends on what your specialties are, too. Yeah, is it better to wait for a good job offer or join a small, low-paying job available right now, where you can maybe even get more experience or just wait and keep looking for what you want? Well, let's put it this way. If you don't have an income, you probably have to make a decision to support your family or yourself even to be able to pay the bills. If you come with a, a significant amount of money, you might be able to afford to keep looking. Uh, however, I always advise, do you really want the principal of the money that you're bringing to disappear? Mm -hmm. Or would it make more sense to take something on a, I always suggest if you're gonna do something, do it on a weekend, do it evenings, uh, and make enough money so at least you can have uh, money in your pocket or at least pay the bills uh, at, while you're looking. My preference is, of course, that they, people do evening and weekend work just so that they can keep looking during the day and be available for employment during the day and available for interviews. Because once you start working in any job, and I use the word any job, uh, you do need to have time off to go for interviews. Yeah. And that may not always work. So that can be a problem. But these are things that we talk about and it really is an individual decision, very much so. Every person has a different situation. You mentioned before that uh, employers want from us that we come to the co company and start to work right away. What are their expectations from us? When you come onto the job? Yes. Well, 
I guess uh, the most important thing is first uh, is obviously watch, listen, and uh, check that you're doing what what you are doing is what it is that the employer wants you to do. So in other words, don't make any assumptions. Check back, is this what it is that you want? Verbally, check that back before you start the assignment. Um, I have, I can remember a situation where we had a client who didn't check, <laughs> was working a couple of days on an assignment and had to redo the whole thing because they did it wrong. Mm -hmm. So that was a waste of time for both the employer and her. So that, those kind of things can happen. So it's more important to find out, make sure you're doing it right, that that's the expectations, that's what they want, and carry on and go back again and make sure you did it right, you know, and carry on from there. Uh, I guess the important thing is, is to uh, listen a lot mm -hmm. and not assume that you know everything, as I said earlier. And even if you do, the, at the beginning, you don't start bragging about all that you know until you, you know, you, yeah. you, you demonstrate your, your competence. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, when immigrants come to Canada, they start in looking uh, for a job that um, uh, the same as they have at back home, but uh, they found out that employers need experience, but they can't get a job without an experience. And what to do in this situation? Where do we need to get our experience if nobody wants to hire us? Well, there's a couple of different ways that different employers look at, at it. Uh, experience not necessarily only in your occupation, but just experience in working in mm -hmm. a Canadian environment um, and understanding, being able to communicate, uh, showing teamwork and uh, your ability to take direction. Uh, those are also very important. So whether it's a related job or an unrelated job that you take, it's still Canadian experience. Now, is Canadian experience really legitimate? Personally, I think it's contrary to, the, to human rights. That, that's my perspective on it. Um, in Ontario, legislation has been passed that Canadian experience cannot be used as a reason for not hiring someone. We don't have that legislation in Manitoba. I, I will hope that someday we will. Mm -hmm. uh, in the interim, uh, I think if people have done any kind of work in Canada, and an employer says that, then they should be able to say, I do have Canadian experience, perhaps not in my field. You know, I think there are comebacks that you can use. In some areas, uh, it's sometimes very important sometimes to do some volunteering, mm -hmm. which also is considered just experience. Even for Canadians, employers expect, you know, that you, that you may have done some, that you've been exposed to work before, you know. Um, it's, uh, as the world gets smaller and communications continue to improve, uh, my hope is that some employers uh, are able to get back, and some do already, to call the former employer, have a good chat with the employer to find out what kind of an individual they are and so on. Some of the things that employers also expect is that you know the, re the, uh, the legislation in Canada and recognizing that, in, uh, particularly in the professions, um, the employer could be sued. There's many legal issues that are involved. So it's very important that in your occupation that you're very familiar with what should be going on in your occupation. Uh, sometimes it takes a little while to learn that. Some people I know, uh, they come and I ask them, well, have you checked out the website of the regulated employer, a uh, regulated uh, profession that you belong to? Oh, no, they haven't read anything. Well, you know, y if you want to work in your occupation, you have to do a little bit of work. And that means reading about it, finding out, and that's part of the, 
the, the scenario that we try to present to, to our clients that, you know, you need to know what companies, what sectors hire people with your background. Mm -hmm. You need to know that in order to do your job search, just sort of waiting for the ads in the paper isn't going to do it. Because as you know, uh, the majority of the jobs are not posted. Um, for immigrants who come to Canada without knowing the language, is it possible for them to find something to work here? Or is better to first learn the language and then move to Canada? Well, my preference is that they learn English before they come, of course. But some of them have but no opportunity. But they have no opportunity, yes. that's right. Uh, they need to take the opportunity to learn the language. Uh, there are now so many programs available to individuals. Uh, there's Saturdays, there's uh, uh, all kinds of community organizations offering English classes. There's several different... Uh, uh, available programs that people can participate that do not cost uh, the individual any money. Um, you know, there's English online. I really encourage people to use English online. Uh, they need to get tested, of course. They've got to start watching television and listening to the radio and really make it a sincere commitment to learn the language. Because, you know, uh, if I were to go to their country, would they allow me to work without knowing the language? I would not be doing the work that I'm doing now, you know, or whatever profession uh, until I had some semblance of it, you know. So it's the same thing. We need to have an understanding because you, you have to deal with customers. Well, the customers, they don't have time to wait until you can mm -hmm. maybe figure it out. I mean, I do think we're in a slightly better spot now. Uh, the Google Translate is yes. wonderful. Uh, certainly, I encourage people to use it, but I hope that they're learning the language at the same time. Is it true that it can be more difficult to find a job due to the age discrimination? Is it harder to get a job the older you get? My opinion is that it probably is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say the older you are, I think when you're... oh. I don't know if you're in your, it depends on, on, on your visage, you know. And uh, number two, I, I don't think people should be disclosing their age in the first place uh, if they're looking for a job. Um, some people, they do write uh, their, on their resumes how old they are, where they were born, when they were, you know, all the, uh, yeah. all kinds of details that really are not, uh, uh, number one required or uh, would be considered illegal for an employer to ask. Nevertheless, an employer is able to tell more or less uh, at certain stage uh, of your life that maybe you're a little bit older than what I'm looking for. So yes, I think there are employer biases. I can assure you there are. There's biases, there's gender bias, and uh, I can assure you that there's racial bias and all the other. So certainly that does exist, but I also will tell you, we work with employers, some phenomenal employers, and they are hiring people. They're not making a distinction in terms of race or country of origin, you know. So, uh, you know, I think uh, there'll always be, at least in, in our lifetime, let's put mm -hmm. it that way, there'll always be discrimination. I don't see it... Uh, uh, being erased, uh, it just is uh, something that is very insidious and uh, unfortunately deeply entrenched with some individuals. So I often consider it's, it's an individual thing. It's not a group and we have, uh, we have great employers, uh, great Canadian employers. Uh, if you check with the Winnipeg Chamber of Commerce, I happen to sit on the employment sector table and uh, we uh, were very concerned that uh, immigrants needed to reach out and uh, employers needed to reach out to get employees with the short labor shortage. And uh, <coughs> the chamber came, came on with us and agreed to establish the Newcomer Employment Hub. And you may want to interview the Winnipeg Chamber uh, about that hub. But that in itself allows employers to reach out 
So those clients who are registered with agencies such as Success Skills, Manitoba Start, the Immigrant Center, and a number of other agencies uh, who help immigrants find work, uh, those agencies uh, can refer people onto this hub. And when individuals, even when individuals reach into the hub on their own, which they can, uh, they, if they're working with one of the agencies, uh, they would list that as the support agency. The purpose of that hub is not only to help people find jobs, but also to provide support to the employers mm -hmm. and to the clients who have maybe gotten a job with an employer who reached out through that system. So uh, there are employers and there are many employers who've signed on. If I recall at a session just the other day that there's well over 80 employers you know, who've signed on with the chamber to very specifically confirm that uh, uh, you know, they, they are totally against uh, discrimination and uh, they want to change the scene. Everyone wants a job they enjoy where they feel that their work matters and makes them feel fulfilled. What is the intention key of finding uh, long-term meaning full employment? Well, I guess I will tackle meaningful first. Uh, meaningful can be also a different job than the kind of job that you were in before. Mm -hmm. And there are individuals who come and say, well, I really didn't enjoy what I did before. I want to do something different. And if they happen to have appropriate background still, uh, there's no reason why they can't switch and change to another position. In terms of uh, long term, I think we need to look at jobs differently today. At one time, people worked their lifetime with a company. Mm -hmm. That has changed dramatically in, I would say, probably in the last 20 25 years easy. Um, often uh, things are done by contract. Employers have contracts. They eventually, depending on how many contracts they get, depends on how many people they can have and in terms of support and carrying out those contracts. And when those contracts finish and someone else got a contract, well, they can't, and they're not getting another contract, uh, they're going to have to lay off people. So I think one, what one ought to look at is you have a specific job, you do the very best that you can do in that job, and when that job finishes, you want to leave with good grace with that employer. You know, in a city like Winnipeg, you really need to think about that because you're just one degree away from somebody else who will know who you are and who will be able to reach back to your employer and so mm -hmm. on and so on. So you need to think about those kind of things. Uh, but long term, uh, that's becoming less uh, frequent. You know, even government jobs are not anymore long term in spite of the fact that one assumes they, are, they would be. But departments can change, they can be downsized, the government decides, gee, we don't have a budget for this, that, and the other. And you may be on layoff, and people have been laid off from the government jobs. You know, so everywhere there's been shrinkage. And automation, of course, uh, is part of that also. You have said that uh, after some time working on specific uh, area, specific position, people realize that they don't enjoy their work anymore. But uh, a career transition can be one of the most challenging. Um, how to help yourself to get closer to realizing new career goals? Well, I guess you really need to, the first thing you really need to do is always look at what is it that you really like to enjoy. do? What do you really enjoy? I mean, it comes down to the basics of, do you like to be work inside? Do you like to work outside? Uh, are you more sports-minded? Or are you more sedentary? In, in other words, do you like to sit 
more than you like to stand. All those kind of things are factors in terms of what you like and don't like. Uh, aside from that, do you like to do paperwork or do you not like to do paperwork? You know, uh, do you like to be in the public eye? Or maybe you'd rather not be. So those are all, you know, you need to know your personality. Uh, then you need to look at the jobs that either exist and how you might fit into those jobs. Do they have some of the characteristics that you like? What are some of the characteristics those jobs have that you don't like? Or you might want to create your own job, you know, and then you determine... <laughs> what the terms are. Uh, and there are more and more people who are starting their own businesses, including immigrants. You know, uh, we have a program called Seed Winnipeg, uh -huh. where you can go and learn how to run a business. You have also programs with the provincial government where you can learn, uh, you know, learn about running a business. Uh, there's constant courses that go on. Some of them are free. Some of them cost money. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, you ha if you're doing career exploration, you have to go around, but the first thing I think is you have to look at your own personality, what you like, what you don't like, and then, of course, you have to look at your finances. Can you afford to do it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, those are all things. And then the other thing is you need to be willing to take the appropriate courses and certifications and qualifications that will allow you to do that uh, new job in, in your new career, uh, otherwise uh, you're still stuck outside. Uh, is it possible to start a new career when you are 30 or 40 years old? Because to get a certificate it takes a lot of time and you, you don't have that time <laughs> what to do. <laughs> but you don't enjoy your job anymore and you want to find something else. I think you can start a career at almost any age, a any new career. Age. Oh, yes. I, I always think, you know, uh, I always use the expression, you've got to be hungry for it. Mm -hmm. And I don't mm -hmm. mean food hungry. Yeah. You've got to really want it. And if you really want something, you will do what it takes to do it. And yes, uh, you are going to look at certification. But if you've always been keeping up and upgrading yourself and taking courses, uh, then it shouldn't be that a big a bother to take a course that's related to something that's going to get you to a, a, your goal, you know. Uh, it's not easy, but you know, nothing comes easy necessarily. If it's too easy, why aren't you doing it anyway, you know. So uh, I think uh, you, you have to make up your mind that you want to mm -hmm. do something and do it. Um, if you keep wait at, at listening to people who say, oh, that takes too long. Oh, I couldn't make it, so how could you? And oh, that's so hard, you know. Uh, I, and that's part of the reason that I see a lot of immigrants do give up on their occupations, because they get discouraged by other people. Mm -hmm. Other people say, oh, you got to go back to school. You're going to have to go back, redo your entire career over again. Well, no, you don't have to redo. That's one of the reasons Success Skills Center exists, to talk to you about that and to work the pathway. There are many different pathways to get back to your occupation. And, you know, there are, yes, there are some things where you have to recertify, of course, because especially in the regulated professions. Why? Of course, you know. But that doesn't mean you have to do the entire program over again. There, there is, like when people say, well, you know, I don't have the credentials, they don't, my credentials don't count in Canada, that's not true. Mm -hmm. You know, you do go through an evaluation process. One of the things we do is we, we're affiliated with World Education Services, and we work with uh, refugees who need to get their, their documents uh, reviewed. Mm -hmm. And so we work with getting the documents over to the Gateway Program. It's called the Gateway Program. And uh, then we work with others who, once they've been assessed through their global re referral program, again, some of those clients or individuals come back to us and we work with them. Or they go to another agency and work with them, which is okay too, uh, but to get them back to those occupations if that's what they want to do. Uh, but you've got to want to do it, you know, and if you're going to listen to everyone else, but to the people who've worked in, in you know, we've worked a long time, 
and some of our counselors have worked for a long time in the field in helping people get back. If you're going to listen to other people, well, those are choices you make. You know, you, you've got to make sure that you, you find the right people to help you get back. You know, you've got to look for your support system. You have to build that. People who believe in you. Uh, you have said that uh, to find a meaningful uh, job, you have to understand where do you want to work, where do you see yourself. Uh, were there the situation when people come to your organization and don't understand where they want to work, what do they enjoy? That's probably the beginning of the conversation that we do with them when they're talking with their counselor. That's mm -hmm. when that search begins. And we may suggest that they take some interest inventory tests. You can do a lot of those kind of things now for free on the internet to see what your interests are. Uh, you can uh, work with the counselor to see, okay, based on what you've already done, what is it did you like, did you not like, what else could we do with that, what other occupations are relevant, and so on. Those are things that you work out with a counselor and you need to talk to somebody who doesn't have, how can I say it, a, a vested interest in you not to succeed. <laughs> you want somebody who wants you to succeed mm -hmm. in whatever you pick up. And that's what we're all about as uh, uh, employment agencies. Uh, we want people to get into jobs. We want employers to get good employees. You know, we want our, our, our employers, uh, we'll call them ours, but they belong to everybody. Uh, to be happy with the, the clients that we send to them because that they're well prepared and interested in doing the job. Are your clients satisfied with the, the job you found for them? Were yes. there the cases when they refused to work there? Well, sure, we have clients who probably aren't happy with us. <laughs> I mean, that wouldn't, that's normal, I think, to some extent, right? There's always going to be someone who's not happy with, mm -hmm. because they have different expectations. Uh, or they may not be happy with what, they, what we said. You know, we may have said, well, it doesn't work that way or whatever. And they insist that it does. And sometimes you just have to say, well, sometimes you have to let the client go. You know, and sometimes the client may decide they have to let us go. So, I mean, you know, uh, we're, uh, we probably make, mis well, we, we make mistakes too. You mm -hmm. know, we misunderstand sometimes too, I'm sure. You know, we're, we're only human. But I think the, we work in a field where we really want to help, to try and help the client get to where they want to go. We don't have the goal to where they want to go. They have the goal. It's not us who find the job ever, and we shouldn't be the one. I'm always pleased when individuals have gotten through, have gone through the program, and they're applying for different jobs. They come back. We advise them. Sometimes they'll, they'll come back and they say, well, can we have a quick practice interview? We do a practice interview before they go for the interview, and so on. And uh, they get the job. It make, you have no idea how happy we are for them. And it's not us who got the job. It's them because they have to work for it. You know, we are a facilitator for them to help them reach their goals always. You know, so yeah, we know, even if we know an employer who hires them, at the end of the day, they still have to present themselves to the employer. They still have to respond to the employer's questions and satisfy that employer. So uh, it, it's totally up to the individual. And the last thing uh, before I let you go, what immigrants should know about Canadian workplace before coming to Canada and before starting looking for a job? What would be your number one advice? Yeah. I think they need to know that uh, in Canada you don't uh, get put into a job. It's not quite that simple, that a lot of jobs result out of networking. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say the majority of jobs result out of networking, uh, who knows who, and making those connections, and uh, ensuring that uh, when we do put things down on paper, that we're able to speak to them, that we have examples of what we did and how we did the job. 
um, so that when they are coming here, they can present themselves as to all the cap capabilities that they have. And uh, that's what we try to do when, when they arrive. We're usually what I call the second step. We like to see individuals uh, come, get the settlement. Mm -hmm. The odd time we do have people coming and they arrive from, from the airport almost at the center and you sort of say, well, they haven't yet experienced the life in Canada. They haven't got their, their housing settled yet. And then when they want to start they want to start working, but they have to take care of all these things still. Mm -hmm. In some cases, they need the driver's license, they need their social insurance card, etc. So the thing is, it's important to, that they need to understand, leave some time for settlement. It's important to realize that jobs uh, don't come as easily as some people think they do. And it, that's in spite of the fact that we have a labor shortage because there are expectations by employers and they feel that they need to be met. Now agencies such as ourselves and other employment service agencies, certainly we play a role in uh, getting the employer to understand some of the experiences that individuals have and how they might fit into their workforce. So mm -hmm. that's a role we play when we're looking uh, for jobs for individuals. And uh, again, uh, we, I, I guess one could say, teach individuals and how they need to respond to some of the questions. Thank you so much, Monica. I think with that, we're going to conclude our today's discussion. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. in and sharing this information. Hopefully, your advice will help a lot of people to finally find an employment. Well, hope, hopefully so. And thank you very much for inviting me again. And thank you, our audience, for joining us today. We hope you enjoy it. If you like the episode, please like, share, and subscribe to see our upcoming episodes.